Hey there YouTubers, last time that we met uh, I gave an instructional video on how to make some floating shelves. Well this time we're going to switch gears, do something completely different. We're going to make a sign. Uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Ed Hamilton, is interested in getting a sign for his pool room. Um, so we went through some proofs and we decided upon a design that he likes. And so we're going to make the sign with a router. Uh, it's going to be a rustic looking, kind of an Old West saloon type of a, uh, of a format. So stay tuned and we'll get to it. Oh, by the way, it's a World Cup week, uh, month, in the United States right now. So go Clint Dempsey and go USA. So the program that I like to use when I am um, creating the stencil for a sign is Microsoft Publisher. Um, one of the things that I really like about it is it gives you the ability to uh, do custom sizing of your template. So just by choosing the different sizes there in the uh, in the pop-up window, gives you the option to be able to define whatever size uh, um, stencil that you would like to, to try to make. So after several uh, drafts, uh, Ed Hamilton and I came up with this final proof. Uh, he wanted a saloon type sign. It said, free beer tomorrow. Y'all come back now. So a couple of long necks on there. Uh, the other thing that's really cool about Microsoft Publisher is you don't have to have a fancy printer and you're not going to have to go to uh, Kinko's to use a plotter or anything like that. Just using your regular inkjet printer or your laser jet printer. You can print out your stencil just like this and it prints it out in blocks. simple as that. So, on to getting our wood ready to work. We're going to use some aged cedar uh, fence slats um, and our design calls for 22 inches wide by 17 inches tall roughly. Uh, this is, it's, it's going to have a very rustic look so for those of you who can see that my square isn't actually square to the bottom of that uh, bottom plank, it's okay. That's kind of the look that we're going for. Time to do some cutting. Sorry about the um, shop fan that's in the background. It's kind of loud. Notice that I do have my hearing and dust protection on. Oh, Steve, that's me. So now that we got our pieces cut down, uh, we're actually going to do the glue up uh, so that we can get our panel. Uh, we're going to glue the three slats together, and in order for us to be able to make sure that we can get a good glue up, clearly we need to uh, we need to plane down the uh, the sides of. Uh, of those individual slats. You can do this with a jack plane like I'm doing here in the in the wood vise um, or you can uh, you can just do it on your table saw or you can uh, rip it with a uh, with a handsaw. Uh, whatever whatever your preference and whatever tools you have and so there we have our our panel. Um, didn't show you the specifics on how to do the glue ups. There are a million videos out there to show you how to do glue ups, but I am going to show you this interesting part. Uh, we need a glue in order to get the stencil to uh, to hold to the uh, um, to the panel, and so we just made a simple homemade glue out of uh, water and flour, and uh, and then we're just going to spread it out. Um, that's the uh, that's actually the spreader that I normally use whenever I am spreading glue on. Um, the uh, sticks that I use to make ingrain cutting boards. A um, little bit small for this operation, but um, you know, it's like when you're a kid, you're making mud pies. You, uh, it's it's the fun of the uh, of what it is that you're doing and not how fast you're doing it. So, got a little bit of excess that we're going to wind up throwing away, but it's just flour and water. So it's not like I'm throwing away six ounces of PVA glue there. So. We get it all spread out and there's the stencil. We lay it on. Make sure you get your alignment right off the bat because you get one shot at this and that's it. Um, so we're gonna make sure that we've got good contact. So to, to ensure that that happens, we're going to use an ink roller. 
and uh, just roll the entire surface of the uh, of the stencil just to make sure that we've got good contact with the uh, with the wood below. And after several minutes of rolling, there we go. You can see that we've got very good contact. Um, and in fact, you can see the scotch tape um, that we're using to hold the stencil pieces together. But there's our template uh, firmly affixed to the panel. What better way to dry everything off than with that very noisy shop fan? So still with the fan in tow, it's time to start carving out the letters and we're going to use the roto zip on the first words. I've only used my router uh, up to this point to, um, to cut out the outline of the lettering before, but I wanted to try the roto zip to see how it would work. I'm using an upcut spiral bit in the roto zip. Ugh. And for those of you who have been to the dentist recently, I really do apologize for the sound of this. That is absolutely horrid. Um, especially if you had to have a root canal. It's almost torturous. But uh, the roto zip performed okay. I didn't really like the control that I had with the roto zip as much as I did with my router. So after I actually cut out the lettering on the first word, free, um, I went back to my my old standby. Went, went back to the girl that brung me. Decided to go back to the router and uh, outline the rest of the letters and then uh, cut out the inside of the lettering with uh, the router as well. Almost, almost through with the F. Too many jokes come to mind there. Maybe subliminally, the reason that I went back to my router too is it does not make that horrific sound when you're outlining the letters. Nearly done. Oh my goodness. It's like fingernails on a chalkboard. So we sped it up to 300% speed so it's not nearly as irritating and it won't bore you to tears if, if it hasn't already. Um, so we've gone from the dentist sound to a mosquito buzzing in your ear. But uh, the other thing, too, that happened with the Roto Zip that really doesn't happen with my router, that the Roto Zip spins at such a high rate of speed that I had a, a, a good deal more wood burn um, when using the Roto Zip to outline the lettering than I experience when um, I'm using my router. So, like I said, I, and I'm not going to show you uh, the outline of the entire word. I'm only going to show you the F and the R at 300% uh, speed, but um, you get the idea. You just trace out the lines and, and then, then you're done with it. So you can see that all of the words have been outlined. We had a problem in the lower right that we have to get um, a stencil overlay to fix that up. I began to actually remove the stencil at this point because I thought that its useful life had uh, essentially come to an end. And then I realized um, after I get through routing out the inside part of the lettering and I'm ready to lay down my paint, that the stencil would actually provide some additional protection to the patina that we're trying to keep as much of as we can, um, that it would provide that protection. And so uh, we left the remainder of the uh, uh, of the stencil on there and actually used masking tape to cover up the holes that I've created by beginning to tear it away. So there's the secondary stencil from the problem that we had in the lower right hand corner. We're gonna we're gonna take that out with the router. The router that ate Chicago. It's a giant router. That's an old router. It's a Sears Craftsman that I've purchased Gosh, 
probably 25 years ago. In the previous millennium. Even though it's much bigger, I just I feel like I've got a little bit more control with the router. I can rest both hands either on the table or on the piece and make much more minute adjustments to the direction of the router. And that, uh, I think for me, that, that it, it's more comfortable. With the Roto-Zip, it was so small, it seemed like it would uh, succumb to the grain of the wood a great deal more. And this is cedar, so unless you run into a knot, you're not dealing with really dense grain structure. Uh, but still, like I said, I've, I've, I went back to the tried and true and, and, uh, and used the router to, uh, to knock out all of the rest of the lettering after that first word. So we've uh, increased the speed of the video through the magic of television, the magic of computers, and uh, we're knocking out the O here and then um, we'll move on to the George Bush letter. There we go, working on the W now. As a matter of fact, this, this Sears Craftsman, here's my commercial for Sears. Uh, the light that you can see on the inside of the router there hasn't even been replaced. That's the original light. So that router, it's all original parts, other than the router bits. Those are new. Now we're cleaning up the inside of the lettering. I've uh, increased the depth ever so slightly on the router bit. Normally, um, I'll use a, a cove bit in order to clean those, those letters out. But uh, these letters are so small that uh, it, it just really would have obliterated the, the narrow parts of the line. So I just used the V bit in order to clean those out as well. So there we go. Got everything done. Now we just use the Dremel with an upcut spiral bit to uh, kind of just tidy up any of the small chips that might remain. Small lettering is a little bit more difficult uh, in that you'll you'll wind up with more chips. But now back come y'all. So this is a beer drinking sign, and apparently the camera operator here has been already partaking of the uh, of the vial fluid because uh, we're not even in focus. Okay, time to get some paint in there. We're just using um, spray-on ink for the lettering. Short bursts, no need to get crazy with it. But we need to go faster, I think, don't you? I wasn't wearing uh, breathing protection, but you can hear from the wind and you can see from the grass that we are outside and there was a breeze blowing and so uh, I was not at risk of uh, taking on too much of the of the ink. So we finish up from this angle and then we switch around to the other side so that we make sure that uh, we get all of the little spots covered up. And there we go. Oops, all done. Now on to the menial and laborious task of getting the stencil off. I think in the future if I use this mixture again, and I think that I will, um, I'll probably cut the glue recipe ever so slightly uh, with a little bit more water uh, to make it, I think this part a little, little easier because the gluten really, really held and um, as you can see, some of the uh, flour from the glue and flour mixture is being left behind, which actually I think turned out to be a positive because I think it adds to the uh, aged look of the uh, of the wood. But uh, in in some spots, it was a real bear uh, to uh, to get that stencil off. But we just use a little one-inch scraper from Harbor Freight, and uh, we got it all off.
So here's what we look like uh, after we get it all cleaned up. Just going to use a black Sharpie pen to cover up any of the spots that might have been, been nicked away as we were taking the stencil off. So we just hit those spots with the Sharpie rather than get the uh, aerosol ink back out and run the risk of creating a bigger mess. Learn that trick from uh, Dave and Eric Roden. Uh, if you go to davesigns.com, uh, those are the gentlemen that are uh, responsible for my knowing as much as I know, which I'm sure that those two gentlemen have forgotten more about sign making than I will ever know in my life. But uh, um, I really have to tip my hat to those gentlemen because their, their instructional videos have been what helped me to... Uh, um, pick up this additional woodworking hobby. Okay, folks, if you ever get a chance to work with fire in your workshop, I highly recommend it. Yes, I do have a fire extinguisher nearby, so if anything goes haywire, we're in good shape. I also have a towel, a damp towel, um, so if anything goes, again, a little out of the, uh, out of the expectation of what we want to have uh, uh, as our outcome here, we, we've got the control devices in place to be able to get things back in line but essentially what we're doing here is we're, we're just fire treating the uh, the edges of the board to add a little more of a weathered look so that it does because these are the cross cuts um, and so we don't want brand new looking wood uh, right next to the old weathered wood that we've got uh, um, from these cedar fence slats so we're gonna fire treat it a little bit and uh, help it to get a little more of an aged look there. You actually can also fire treat the inside of your lettering if you choose not to use adhesive ink. I was apologizing a little earlier about the uh, about the loudness of my fan and I don't know if you saw the back of my hand there but it was quite shiny from sweat. Um, we are in Pearland, Texas and it is late in the month of June and so, um, she's a hot one. You can see my son's Mini Cooper in the reflection of the refrigerator just in the distance there. Um, so we're in the garage with the doors open, uh, working in the ambient outdoor temperature. And so, um, I run that fan as often as I possibly can, but I'll, I promise in future videos I'll try to mind the, uh, the volume of it. But, um, we fire treated the uh, sides and now it's trying time to get, uh, some protective coating on there. We're not going to go crazy with it. Uh, we're just going to use a uh, Minwax low gloss spray on polyurethane uh, just to keep, in all honesty, to kind of keep the board from splintering up and people catching things in their fingers. We obviously, because of the patina, um, we don't want to we don't want to do a lot of sanding on this, or we're going to lose that weathered look. Um, and that spray on polyurethane dries pretty quickly. Uh, not that quickly though. They, I edited uh, the dry time. It was about 10 minutes. So now to uh, spray the finish on the front side. And we are just about to beer 30. It's nearly time for a cold one. Yeah, let's speed it up a little bit so we can get to that. How about it? And there she is, finished product. Like I said, uh, the uh, I think that the leftover flower that we didn't get scraped off kind of adds to the aged look of the uh, of the piece. I think it turned out nice. Thanks for watching.